Welcome to Moments with Mary Ann. This is your host, Mary Ann Pastana. We're here today with special guest, Chloe Panta, who's here to share with us her new book, Untapped Magic, Manifestation Methods for Living a Limitless Life. So are you looking to create a life of everything you want? Well, today's guest is here to share with us how to do just that. So Chloe Panta is a highly sought-after mindset expert and transformational coach who helps people achieve their ultimate life goals. She uses an evidence-based, proven system with scientific data to support its effectiveness to help her clients overcome obstacles that are keeping them stuck in life. Chloe has been featured in numerous media outlets, including Los Angeles Times, Newsweek, and Medium. So welcome to the show, Chloe Panta. Thank you so much, Marianne. It's a pleasure to be here. Well, what an honor it is to have you here and to talk about this book. So what inspired you to write this? You know, when I was growing up, and this is when I was a teenager, about maybe 17 or 18 years old. And at this point, I'm trying to figure out, you know, what do I want to do with my life? I'm finishing high school, getting ready to go to college. And I wish at that point in my life, I had a guide or someone to help me to determine what I wanted to do with my life, but also to guide me and to help me understand that my thoughts equal things. And in this world, I really can become whatever I want it to become. But at that time, I was really focused on trying to get out of a bad neighborhood and just starting my life, making money so that I could, at that point, pivot myself to live a much better life than where I grew up. So my focus at that time was really monetary, and I wanted to just escape my environment and leave where I was so that I could easily be able to live a a much better life. So instead of focusing on what I wanted to do at that point, I simply focused on how can I make more money? So I wrote this book for anyone who's struggling with understanding how they actually can achieve the life that they want, full of abundance and joy and happiness and love, and not have to worry about chasing dreams or or chasing things that don't work out and are not aligned with who they really are. So this book, it talks about the manifestation methods for how we can live a limitless life and whatever limitless means to each and every one of us, how that's possible for us to achieve. And that's really what inspired me to write the book. I wrote it for my younger self as a guide so that if I could go back in time, I would know exactly what to do and not have to chase money, but I can chase my dreams and also focus on my goals in life and not have to worry about anything else because that would come back full circle. So that's why I wrote the book was for someone who would be like me in their younger years or even older or any stage of life who just wants guidance on living a more abundant and happy life, no matter where they are right now. Well, you start off your book and you say, let us let me ask you a serious question. Do you believe in magic? And I think for a lot of people, they would go, wait a minute, that's a serious question. And <laughs> what kind of magic is this? Yes. Yes. And I wrote it because to me, everything that's happened in my life, once I began to tap into my own untapped magic, everything just seemed magical. My life began to change and it just turned into really honestly a fairy tale. Even my friends would say, you're glowing. What's happening? Like, what are you doing? You just, you look different. You're acting different. What's going on with you? So I definitely believe in magic. And the magic that I talk about in the book is the magic that we have inside of us. Each and every one of us has the magic to tap into our minds and to create a life that we really love. And I go into modalities and techniques that teaches us how we can actually tap into that magic now, starting today, to live the life that we want to live. How struggle, trauma, abuse, pain, and shame, they no longer have to be a part of us and how we can simply change the way that we think and create a world that allows us to live our happily ever after, whatever that may look like for each and every one of us. 
we often hear people say, well, they can't find the right partner or they're, they can't seem to bring money into their lives. What do you say to those folks? Why, why is that happening? So that's happening because it's something that I call a thought loop. When we loop different situations and scenarios with different people, and they seem to happen over and over again in our lives, such as we may end one relationship because that one wasn't great, and then we meet someone else, but it's the same type of behavior from the last one that seems to be, you know, dwelling and just kind of repeating itself in the new one. So we're just kind of stuck and we're thinking, well, how do I change this? What am I doing wrong? Why can't I find someone who lights me up or someone who respects me or treats me how I want to be treated? And the answer to that is that if we don't believe deep down inside that we're worthy of having that particular person, they're never going to show up. And we're only going to attract to us the people that we feel we're worthy of having in our lives. So this happened to me when I was younger and I was in a situation where I attracted the same types of toxic people because deep down inside, I didn't believe I was worthy of having anyone better. This is the same with the job. If we don't believe that we're well-qualified, worthy, or deserving of having something more than what we have right now, we're never going to have that in our lives. It begins with us unblocking whatever situation may have happened either in our childhood or as a young adult that stemmed in us that this is what we deserve and this is what we believe we're worthy of having. So once we rewire the way that we think and we change that, we then can cultivate in a new way of thinking We can attract more money. We can attract our ideal partner once we believe that we deserve to have better. But again, it isn't just saying things and saying them half-heartedly, but it's actually saying that you deserve something better. You deserve it and you're worthy of having it, but also believing that it's possible for you to have and that it's actually going to come to you. And then once we do that, that's when it shows up in our lives. But when we consistently think about and dwell into negative situations, negative circumstances, we're only going to continually to experience that because that's all that we're focusing on. So instead of that, we have to start focusing on the best outcome that can happen for us, but also taking what I call aligned, actionable steps to get to that point in time. That can be getting a certification for a new job or starting a business or applying for promotion. That can be putting yourself out there to date someone or rekindling what you already have. That could be ending something that isn't working out for you. You have to decide when you've had enough and what you deserve and then be firm in that. Once you're firm, then you can start to call in what you really deserve in this life. So is that using the that connection of our subconscious mind to then manifest the things we want in our lives? Absolutely. Our subconscious mind is what houses our long-term memory. So again, it goes back to our childhood. It goes back to what we were taught and what our belief systems were because they came from our caregivers, our parents, and whatever they believed in, they have become our beliefs. So if we no longer want to hold on to all of those beliefs, We have to then rewire what our belief system is. And what I mean by that is we have to change those patterns. And that goes back into our subconscious mind where we have to unblock what no longer serves us. If we have grown up to believe that money is scarce or money is evil and people that have money are up to no good, we have to ask ourselves, is this what I believe in? Is this true to me? Do I want to hold on to this belief? And if you don't, you then have to let that go and then cultivate a new way of thinking where money comes easily and effortless to me. Money is in abundance. There is more than enough money in this world, just as there is more than enough air for everyone to breathe on this earth. And once we cultivate that type of thinking, then we can what I call trick our subconscious mind to believe that, okay, now we're going to start thinking in terms of abundance and joy and wealth and great health. And that's when those things start to show up in our lives because we believe that that's possible for us to have. I like how in your book, you talk about thoughts plus feelings 
equals our reality. And can you break that down for us? Yeah, absolutely. Now, what I mean by this is our thoughts and our feelings equals our reality is when you think about something, and this can be something that obviously it hasn't happened yet for you. When you think about it and you have the feeling that goes behind it, you're putting out energy into the universe to make that thing your reality. That can be a book deal. That can be a new promotion where you see yourself going through the interview process and then getting the job. Maybe that's buying a new house where you see yourself going through the entire process of looking at new homes and then you're signing the deal and you have a new home. When you actually think about what it is like to have those things and then you feel what it would feel like to have it. You're sending out again the universe energy that this is what I want to cultivate into my life. I want to bring this into my life. And then when you do that, you're taking aligned, actionable steps to bring that into your life. So that could be, again, for the promotion taking a certification or building rapport with senior leaders, or if it's going to be a new house, doing what you have to do to make that a reality for yourself. But when you feel that, it becomes so real that it's only a matter of moment in time when you get to that point when it becomes yours. So I wholeheartedly believe that when we put our thinking and our feelings together, we combine those, that's when we become able to see our reality once we put in the work to bring that into our our lives. So for those that are listening and they want to manifest wealth in their lives, is there something that they really need to understand about money? Yes, absolutely. Wealth is simply energy. Money is energy. And what I mean by that is there is more than enough energy in this world, just as there is more than enough air for us to breathe. There are more than enough opportunities for us to have to call in what we want. So if we seek wealth, if we want to create more money in our lives, we first have to understand that whatever we're thinking about right now, wherever we are in this moment in time, is an exact correlation of everything that we've done in the past that has gotten us where we are today. If we're not happy with where we are today, we have to then change the way that we're thinking about certain things and aspects in our life to create a better life for ourselves. So in terms of money, if there are bills that are piling up, or we just don't feel like we have enough, we have to first ask ourselves, what if we thought about something differently? What if we became grateful for what we have, even if we aren't really where we want to be, even if we really aren't where we see ourselves going? But if we're grateful for what we currently have right now, we're allowing the universe to say, okay, this person, they're happy. They're feeling happy. They aren't where they want to be, but I know that they want more. I'm going to bring them more of that feeling of happiness. The thing is that the universe doesn't know what right or wrong is or good or bad is. It only knows energy. So if we're sad and dwindling and dead or just feelings of unhappiness and we just kind of wallow in that all day long and we just seem to fall deeper and deeper into a depression, it's because that is the energy that we're putting out into the world. And the universe will only send that back to you. So even if we're not feeling our best, it's really important for us to try and pull ourselves out of that because when we think about what we have and how grateful we we are for what we have right now, the universe will take that tiny bit of positivity and multiply that and bring you more of that feeling. So when it comes to wealth, it's the same exact thing. Instead of focusing on how many bills that you have to pay or how things aren't working out for you, we have to then switch that to, I'm grateful for what I have. It's got me where I am right now. And I know that more is on the way. And even though it may not feel like it's coming, just because we're focusing on the good things that we do have, that will then trigger to bring more positivity into our world. That will encourage innovative ideas for building more wealth or opportunities that kind of just maybe fall out of the sky because we're changing the way that we're thinking. We're shifting our energy to one of a negative standpoint to one that is more positive. So that is what I would say about building wealth is that 
it comes down to shifting the way that we think about wealth and not having to worry about what our analytical brain will tell us because our analytical side will only focus on what we've already done in the past or what has worked. But when it comes to manifesting with the universe, there are so many ways that are outside of our knowledge that will allow us to bring in and experience great wealth because it's something that we haven't done before. When we're open and receptive to new ideas, that's when they form and that's when we can experience the wonders and the abundance of the universe. In your book, you talk about a manifestation list. What is that and what does that look like? So it can look like anything for anyone. A manifestation list can be a big manifestation list. It can be a little manifestation list. Maybe the little manifestation list is, you know, you want to snag a new pair of Levi's or you want to snag maybe a vintage pair for $40 from a thrift store. Maybe it can be a free coffee from Starbucks, or maybe you're walking down the street and you happen to find a $20 bill on the, on the ground. It can be anything that's small that you want to manifest into your life. And it's easy because it's something that you can easily do. And then we have what I call a big manifestation list. And these are our big goals, our big dreams. So This can be maybe moving across the country to your dream town or dream city or finding your soulmate and marrying them or being a part of that person's life. This can be anything that's big that you really want to cultivate and call in. And when I say the big manifestation list or even the the small manifestation list, I'm talking about things that we can manifest and, and work on in our everyday life. So when we write this down, it becomes real because now we're seeing ourselves as having this in our life. And when we write down what we want, we then can take the necessary aligned actionable steps to get there. So if you're trying to, again, this goes back to going to build wealth. If you're wanting to, let's say, get a promotion or start a business, you have to then list out the steps it would take for you to get to that point in your life. And when we do that, we're more inclined to actually reach those manifestations. But writing them down is the first step because it then becomes real. And we're putting it out there to the universe that we're trying to work on these goals and bring them into our lives. But an easy win is always to start with something small and then to grow off of that and to work on achieving bigger goals that may not have seemed possible once before. In your book, you talk about overcoming limiting beliefs. So we hear a lot about that nowadays, but how does somebody overcome that? When we overcome a limiting belief, this is something that In my book, I also have access to what I call creative imaginings, and these are deep dives into subliminal messagings that help us to rewire the way that we're thinking. Because when we're trying to manifest, it's deeper than just thinking happy thoughts. We have to actually do the work that will help us to become um, who we want to be, who our ideal self is. So when we have a limiting belief, this can be something that had been brought on by trauma, either from our childhood or even as a young adult. Um, This can be brought on from pain or shame that we may have felt as a child or as a young adult, even as an adolescent. These are things that are keeping us stuck in our life right now and preventing us from moving forward. So the best way to get rid of a limiting belief is to first identify what the limiting belief is and knowing that there is one and that you have one and it needs to be addressed. Once we identify the limiting belief, the next thing that we need to do is we need to go back in time in our mind and visualize that situation if it isn't too painful, of course, and understand that whatever may have happened to us was either out of our control And we are not to be blamed for that situation and letting go any feelings of guilt or shame towards anyone who may have caused that trauma and letting that go, understanding that they did the best they could to either provide for us if we have a a limiting belief over money and a scarcity mindset, if there was trauma involved, understanding that, again, the people in our lives at that time 
did the best they could at that time and to let them go, forgive and let that go from our lives. And then if we're trying to overcome these limiting beliefs, we then do what I would call the creative imagining, which is a hypnosis, a type of hypnosis. And what this does is it goes into our subconscious mind to rewire these long-term memories and to change them into more positive aspects of our lives. And this way we can cultivate and rewrite our story to one that is more positive, more uplifting, but also something that will allow us to live a more joyous life. Once we do that, we then will shift our perspective and become who we want to become. So if we're wanting to live a trauma-free life or a life where a scarcity mindset is no longer an issue, we can then do that because we no longer are held back by the limiting belief of there's never going to be enough, or because this happened to me at a young age, I don't trust people, or because I wasn't smart enough in school, I can never get a good job. We can then eliminate those thoughts and create the life that we've always thought maybe have never been possible for us, but now is because we've changed the way that we think. So that is how someone can definitely get rid of the limiting belief and change the way that they have an outlook on the world and cultivate a world that they want to live in and live a happier life. Well, on that note, we're going to pause here for a quick break. We've been speaking with Chloe Panta in regards to her new book, Untapped Magic, Manifestation Methods for Living a Limitless Life. You've been listening to Moments with Mary Ann. We'll be right back after these messages from our sponsors. Are you an author, speaker, or expert who is looking for more publicity? Visit RadioGuestList.com and sign up for free interview requests from shows looking for guests. Radio Guest List is the number one free booking resource for radio, podcasts, and TV talk shows who are looking for experts like you right now. Visit RadioGuestList.com and sign up today to get the visibility you deserve. There comes a moment when you realize you're somewhere special. When you discover that each beautiful creature that you see has been rescued from a life of absolute horror and brought to this incredibly free place, here is where their lives were forever changed and where yours will as well. Discover over 500 tigers, bears, and lions at the brand new visitor center at the Wild Animal Sanctuary just outside Denver. For more information, visit wildanimalsanctuary.org. Discover true freedom at the Wild Animal Sanctuary. It's one thing to become attached to your perfect home, but what do you do when that home becomes attached to you? A family in dire need of a fresh start, a mysterious house tied to the past. Buried deep within the foundation of the old Far Hill Manor lies a centuries-old secret. Dark forces or something stronger just waiting to be discovered. Caretaker, a supernatural thriller by breakout authors R.J. Halpert. Internationally recognized and award-winning author Judy Goodman works and teaches outside the box of limited thinking. Working with people from every walk of life, her goal is to empower you to be the best you can be, no matter what the challenge is. Born with the gift of seeing beyond our normal vision, she has an extraordinary gift of working with every challenge. Teaching beyond conventional wisdom, her work is described as life-changing. Visit JudyGoodman.com. That's JudyGoodman.com. I'd like to thank Jason Eastwood at Guitarfulness for sharing his inspiring music and talent with us. His music is known worldwide for cultivating atmospheres of harmony, inner peace, and clarity. Visit Jason's website at guitarfulness.com. Join his newsletter, be part of his community, and download his music. Welcome back to Moments with Marianne. We're here today with special guest, Chloe Panta, who's here to share with us her new book, Untapped Magic, Manifestation Methods for Living a Limitless Life. Before I left for break, we were talking about being able to cultivate the world we want to live in and how that could look different for everybody. Just as choosing not to attend college 
does not guarantee that you won't reach levels of success that you dream of. So many people blaze their own trail. And I wanted that to be known because that's a struggle with a lot of people where they may only have a high school degree and they don't feel worthy of becoming, let's say, an expert or someone who can help other people or to be a successful person because they feel held back by not having a degree or higher education, either because of where they grew up or just not having the right resources or other issues that may have happened. But it doesn't mean that you can't be successful and live the life that you want to live. In your book, you also talk about intention plus essence equals manifestation. And I would love for you to explain that for our listeners. Of course. This is probably one of my favorites because this is what I have done to bring manifestations into my own life and also the lives of my clients, my friends. It's really fun because you get to kind of play around and and try on, as I call, what fits you. And then if it doesn't feel right, you can always let it go. And then you can come back to it later if you're trying to achieve, let's say, grander manifestations. But what I mean by the intention and the essence, it equals our manifestation. What I mean by that is when you have an intention of something, let's say, again, I'm going to go back to the analogy of wealth because it's such a huge issue with a lot of people and they want to either have financial security and feel secure, feel safe, and also feel protected. And that's something that a lot of people are struggling with as to how to create more of that. So let's say someone wants to save up $100,000 in the next two years. And that may seem like an astronomical amount, and that may seem impossible right now. But it isn't about the money or the number, but it is about what about the money is it going to bring you? Is it going to bring you peace of mind? Is it going to bring you security? Is it going to afford you a vacation every once in a while or not have to worry about anything for a couple of years or to provide a nest egg for yourself? Uh, generational wealth for your family. What is it? So the essence is what that's going to provide for you. And then once you have an intention set as of, I want to save up $100,000 in the next two years so that I have financial security set for myself and also generational wealth for my kids. If that is the essence of what that is, then that will become your manifestation because you have the essence of what that's going to provide for you. When people say, I want more money, well, what is the money going to do? When you get the money, what are you going to do with it? If you were given a million dollars today, what's going to happen to it? There are so many people who win the lottery, but they become broke because they don't know what to do with the money. So in order for us to have the money, we have to understand that it's just a tool for us to use it to get to where we want to go. And that's the essence of the money. So what feelings do we want to have? If we have that money, how do we feel? Do we feel safe and secure? Do we feel that we can do more and we can feel more relaxed and stress-free because we don't have to worry about it? What is the essence of that going to bring you? Just like if you buy or rent a new house, you want a new house and you want, let's say, the house in a suburb, but why the suburb? What is that going to do for you? You have to look at the essence and the essence could be, again, maybe this person wants to have a safe environment for their kids to grow up in or to be able to be friends with other successful people to go to the best schools. That is the essence of having, let's say, that beautiful house in the suburbs. So once we put together our intention of having something and the essence of what it brings us, that is when it becomes our reality. Once again, we take the aligned, actionable steps to make it real for us in our lives. That action such an important piece. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we can't get anywhere without action. So it isn't that kind of magic. We actually have to do the work in order for it to become real for us. Well, we're not going to go over this, but I know in your book you have these you know, great um, action, magic action to go ahead and release early childhood blockages. And that's so interesting. I find that so fascinating because so many people have that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a lot of people have 
childhood trauma. They may not even know that they have it until they actually do the work and then something comes up. And the reason I have the magic actions is because it's so important and vital for us to go back to the beginning of when we first came into this world and we were kids and we were young and we took in so much information as our truth, even though it may not be true for us. So again, that can be belief systems of our caretakers, our parents, our peers, the media, our friends, whoever. And just because someone said that this is their truth, we took it as our truth. So as we grow up, these beliefs, they become our truth. This can be a religious aspect or an aspect of a limiting belief. This can be anything. And as we go through life, we start to experience what our parents may have experienced or their parents or our peers, because again, their truth has become our truth. So we act like the five people that we hang around the most because we're taking in what their belief systems are. So in order to change that, if we no longer want to have these truths as our truth, we then have to question our belief systems. And that is why it's so important to go back to our childhood and to understand where they stemmed from and then to rewire them so that we can then cultivate and call in the life that we really want. So that's why I have the magic actions that we actually can do the work that is required for us to change those belief systems that are false to us now and then cultivate and call in what we want to have as our truth. In your book, you talk about our authentic self, and I think that can be pretty elusive for many people. Can, can you explain what that is and how we can find it? Yeah, absolutely. So our authentic self, this again, it goes back to us when we were first born. We were unscathed. We were whole. We had no one who had their intentions that were dwelled into us. We were just our whole authentic selves. And as we grow up and we are in this world, we take on pain, shame, we experience trauma, we experience a lot of things that are not who we are on an authentic level. So we built up layers to protect ourselves. And these layers, they keep us further away from who we are on an authentic level. So as we are going through life and we're peeling back the layers as we begin to unblock in our lives, we're peeling back the layers of pain and shame and trauma and invisibility. We're peeling back all of these layers that no longer serve us to get back to who we are on an authentic level. And that means being ourselves and being who we are unapologetically without worrying or caring about what anyone has to say or think of us because we know who we are on an authentic level and we're living that life every single day. We aren't lying to ourselves or to others about who we are, what we stand for. We stand for what we believe in firmly and we have that as who we are. It's ingrained in us. So that's what I mean when I talk about our authentic self. It is just going back to who we are on a whole unscathed level as we were when we were first born into this world. Can you share with us the importance of keeping our vibration high? I, I know a lot of people have a hard time with this, especially when things like money's tough and tight and their bosses are horrible and hard to work with. I mean, how do we do that? Yeah, it can be difficult and it's it's very difficult to do it, especially if you're going through something tough right now in your life. It's hard. It's not easy. But when we keep our vibes high, this is what raises our vibration. And what I mean by that, again, it is my opinion that this world is made up of energy and we operate on energetic levels. And on those energetic levels are people and things and situations and circumstances that match the same energy that we put out. So when we keep our vibrations high, in other words, when we think positive thoughts, this is difficult to do, I know, because every day we're not happy. It's just life, right? But if we have even one positive thought, it obliviates a thousand negative thoughts. So when we think positively, even a few times a day, this will continue to raise our vibration to meet the level of the things we want. So 
promotion, a brand new job, amazing health, wealth, abundance, joy. These emotions, they all reside on the higher levels of the vibrational plane. And when we are sad and we are depressed and we're anxious, we're on a lower level because these are all negative lower level emotions and they keep us stuck. They keep us sad. They keep us broke. They keep us in situations that we don't like. So in order for us to get out of that, we have to change again the way that we think. So again, even one positive thought can obliviate a thousand negative ones. So when we keep our vibrations high, we're basically telling the universe, hey, I know that my situation isn't the greatest right now, but I'm doing what I can. I'm doing the best that I can to make sure that I can live a great life. So one positive thought that can be, I woke up today. I woke up today. I got out of bed. I'm doing my best. That is a positive thought versus someone who is is still in bed all day long and they can't get out of bed. Or for someone who has a really, really negative thought pattern, they don't know how to get out of it. When we change the way that we think, we then can cultivate and allow other positive thoughts to come into our mind. But we also encourage positive opportunities to happen for us. So that is why it's so important to keep our vibes high because doing that can change our lives. Even if we smile at a stranger walking down the street or at the coffee shop or saying thank you to someone, that can brighten someone's day. So just by doing a small gesture such as that can change someone else's perspective. It can change their day, change their world. And that has a positive ripple effect on everyone in the world because we're all affected by that. So that is what I would say as to how we can keep our vibes high, even when we don't feel like it, we don't have the energy to do it. We have to just try our best to keep at least one positive thought with us every single day. So magnetism, I want to go back again to keeping our vibes high. Magnetism is what we attract to us. So again, attracting the right partner, it means that you're on the same wavelength. You are vibing on the same wavelength. When we're not vibing high, when we are not attracting our ideal partner, it is because we're on one level and they're on another level. But also it can mean that we're attracting people that again, we think that we deserve to have in our lives. So if we want to attract and magnetize amazing people, opportunities, joy, abundance, wealth, amazing health, we have to, again, keep our vibrations high. This can be listening to subliminal messaging. This can be having a mantra that you say every day, which can be everything will always work out for me, but wholeheartedly believing that. This can also be when you feel that you're not doing well is saying something anyway that can change your perspective to keep your vibration high because we attract like, like attracts like. And if we don't want to have a happy life, we're only going to attract low level situations when we're not vibing high. But if we know something needs to change, then we're wanting to change and also have amazing people in our lives we have to change the way that we think. So again, something as simple as smiling at a stranger walking down the street can attract amazing opportunities to you because you are now raising your vibration. This can be something as simple as not getting irate when you're driving in the car in traffic because you're stuck in traffic. It's something that happens to all of us. But when you keep your cool, when you check your attitude, and you change the way that you respond and react to situations, you are, again, attracting and you are magnetizing situations that are going to be in your favor because you are no longer allowing low-level negative thought entities to enter into your mind. So something as simple as that can change your life and also help you magnetize what you really want in this world versus what you don't want. So when we look at being able to match our energy with what it is that we want in our lives, how do we get to that place when we're really having a tough time just being? Yeah, it can be difficult. We do it by taking small, aligned, actionable steps. 
That's the only way that we can get from point A to point B is actually doing the work. So if we feel stuck right now, we have to ask ourselves, well, why do we feel stuck? What is keeping us stuck? Is it a situation? Is it a person? Is it our job? Is it our boss? Is it a friend? What's happening where we just don't feel good anymore about ourselves? You know, once we identify what that is, we then have to take the necessary steps to either confront the person or situation if it's not going to be an irate or escalate to that type of situation and tell them how you feel. This is a person. If you can't do that, I would say write them a letter or an email in a non-confrontational way. But I would also say if it's a situation, figure out a way to remove yourself from the situation and then put yourself in a better one. This can be if you have a toxic boss or maybe a friendship that isn't working out anymore, find a way where you can find either a better position, a different department, a different company, so that you have your peace. So I know it's difficult for us to do that, but once we take the aligned, actionable steps, and they can be small steps, but we have to move in order to get where we want to go. And once we do that, we can then cultivate and get ourselves in a place where we're happy and we're living a much better life. In your book, you talk about rewriting our story. Why would we do that? I would say we rewrite our story because we're not happy with how it's playing out. This is our book. This is our movie. This is our life. And we are the captain. We are the co-pilot. We are the author. We're the captain of the ship. We're the co-pilot of the plane. We're the author of our story. We're the director of our movie. And if it's going (laughs) downhill, we don't like it. We can change it. So when I say rewrite our story, I mean that we have the power to change our lives and make our lives however we want it to turn out. Let's say we want to lose weight or whatever the case is, we have the power to do that. We can become a fitter person or a healthier person. If we want a new career, we can change careers. If we want to fall in love again, we can do that. If we want to recover from trauma or pain, or shame, or find love after divorce, or love ourselves for the first time, we can do that. And we have the power to do that. But a lot of us don't believe that we have that power, that it doesn't exist, or that outside circumstances or situations have that power. And we just kind of weave through life kind of blindly, unknowing what's going to happen next. And that isn't a way to live our lives. So When we take control of our lives and we write the story that we want to live and take the steps to get there, we can then live out that life. Once we know that where we're going right now, it isn't where we want to go. We can change that path and we can change it to one that lights us up, makes us happy and makes us feel joyous. Even if we feel completely stuck, completely low, unhappy, unworthy, undeserving, we can change it and make it where our life is exactly how we want it to go. So that's possible. And that's why in the book, I talk about rewriting our story because we're the captain of our our ship. And it's up to us to co-create with the universe. And as I say, dance with the universe so that we can together create a world and a life that lights us up because we're deserving of that. And I want people to know that it's possible for them to have a life and a world that lights them up and makes them feel joyous when you wake up and just overall happy with how things are going. So it's important to understand that you can change your story no matter where you are in life, no matter your path or what's happened before. It's never too late to live a limitless life. I love that. I think that that's so empowering for so many people that we can make these changes and it's not some mysterious thing out there. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's worked for so many people. It's worked for me. You know, I didn't have a great life all the time. And if I can come from the darkness, then anybody can come and change their lives and live limitlessly. Now, is gratitude a big part of this? Gratitude is. And again, we don't have to 
be having an amazing life right now. Our life can just be, you know, it can be mediocre. It just, it can be okay, but it doesn't matter where we are on our path. Gratitude is simply being thankful for what you have right now and where you are. It doesn't mean that you're satisfied with where you are, but it means that you're grateful that you have a home over your head, you have food on the table, you have clothes on your back. It's being grateful for the necessities that you have for your life, for being here. It isn't saying, hey, I have everything I want. I'm happy. Thanks. Okay, bye. It's not saying that. It's just simply acknowledging that you're grateful for where you are, even though there is still work that needs to be done. And the reason gratitude is so important is because it basically tells the universe, okay, they want to have more, they want to have this in their life. They want to cultivate and call in more joy or more abundance or happiness. Even small moments when we laugh, when we're having a good time with our friends or family or whoever, and we're smiling, we're laughing, that's something to be grateful for, that community, because you have that. And the universe is like, okay, they they want more of this. I'm going to give them more of these types of feelings. So being grateful for something is basically sending the universe vibes that you want to have more of the good stuff in your life. And that's how you continuously graduate to new levels, as I call it. And you can cultivate even more experiences of gratefulness, of happiness, of joy and abundance when you're grateful for small little things. That's that I think that's so perfect, being able to take steps to move forward. And it has me kind of thinking, you know, a lot of times we can be working on this ourselves, but what if we're surrounded by people who have maybe bad attitudes and, you know, a, a mentality that there's a lack of everything? Yeah. And they're, they're out there. And I know a lot of us have people that we're, you know, we work with that our family members, even friends, people that we've known for a very long time that are just toxic and there's no way to get rid of them 100%. So for those people, especially if people around you may, may be little you or tell you, oh, that's not possible for you to have. What are you talking about? They're out there, but you can't always get rid of them. So if that's the case, what I would suggest and what I would recommend is to have a conversation with them. It can be non-confrontational, just a casual conversation and tell them how you feel. Tell them how you feel about the way that they respond or react because nine times out of 10, they may not even know that what they're saying is affecting you because they're unaware of how it is reactive towards you and how you react towards them. So have a conversation. If you can't have a conversation with them, again, what I would suggest is to write a non-confrontational email or a text message and let them know exactly how you feel. And if that doesn't work, if it's just not working out, then I would say on a bare minimum level to be cordial and be respectful to them. Just because someone that you may work with or a family member, they may treat you in a way that you don't want to be treated, you should not lower your standards to meet their standards of someone who is toxic or someone that you can't be around, especially if it's someone that's in your family where you have to be around them at some point in your life or a coworker or a boss. If it's a boss, I would definitely try and get a new position in another department or look for another job altogether. But if it's someone that you have to work with, I would say on a respectable level, you'd have to be respectful to them. If it's a family member, again, respectable level and that's it. You don't have to engage in conversation. And if it gets out of hand and controversial, you have the right to walk away. You don't have to stay around and listen to something that isn't going to do you any good. So those are my tips for people that are with toxic people or situations they can't get out of. Now, if it's a a spouse or partner or a friendship, now that's something that you have the power to walk away from if after trying to resolve the issue, there is no type of improvement. I would say you have to ask yourself, is it better for me to continue to fight for this friendship or this relationship? 
And if it is, then I would do everything that I could to meet them or at least have them meet you halfway. If they can't do that, I would say it's time to think about maybe cutting ties and letting that relationship go if it isn't lighting you up. If you're feeling more sad and depressed and unhappy, then I would really want you to consider thinking about having your happiness as your priority and saying, if I'm with this person for the rest of my life, would I be happy? Would I really want to spend my life feeling like how I feel right now? And if the answer is no, I would consider finding ways to either sever ties um, or ending the relationship with people that are just toxic because we deserve to live a happy life. And toxic people, if there is no resolution, they don't deserve our happiness. They don't deserve to take that away from us. And we give away our power and we do that. So take your power back and stand firm for people that are no longer serving you in your life. So what would you like readers and our listeners to take away from your book? I would want readers to take away from my book, Untapped Magic, that anything is possible in this life to have. No matter what anyone tells you or says that isn't true, if it doesn't align with who you are, it doesn't belong to you. Your truth is what you make it in this world. And living your own limitless life, whatever that may be for you, is possible. And you have the power and ability to do that when you tap into your untapped magic. This book is for anyone from any walk of life, any age. You can literally call in happiness, love, abundance, amazing health. You can do that. It's your birthright. And I want people to know that just because someone else isn't happy or living an amazing life doesn't mean that you can't live your most amazing limitless life. Because when you're happy and someone notices that, they think, wow, then that must be possible for me to have too. And I want people to take away that this book is meant to help you live your most abundant and happy life. When we're all happy and joyous, we make the world a better place to live in, a more happy place to live in. And that's why I wrote the book. I wrote it for you to live your most amazing, happy life. And that's what I want people to take away from Untapped Magic. For those listeners out there that feel like they need a little additional help, do you work with people with this? I do. I have a life coaching and hypnotherapy practice, and I am accepting new clients. I help people all the time overcome childhood trauma, low self-worth, and limiting beliefs so that they can actually cultivate a better life. And if they're interested, then they can reach me at my website. It's chloeponta.co. And from there, they can schedule a free session and I can learn more about them and how I can help them to cultivate a limitless life. Well, Chloe, thank you so much for taking the time to be on the show with us here today. Thank you so much, Marianne. It was my pleasure. Well, thank you, Chloe. It's been such an honor to spend this time with you and to talk about your new book, Untapped Magic, Manifestation Methods for Living a Limitless Life. Untapped Magic is available to Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and everywhere books are sold. And remember, support our indie bookstores. If you don't see it on the shelf, just ask for them to order it. Well, we're at the end of our time today. I'd like to thank everyone for tuning in. You've been listening to Moments with Marianne, where we make every moment count. In a single moment, your life can change. Moments with Marianne is a transformative hour that covers an endless array of topics with the best of the best. Her guests are leaders in their fields, ranging from inspirational authors, top industry leaders, and business and spiritual entrepreneurs. Each guest is gifted and a true visionary, a recognized leader in her own work. And while teaching others to develop, refocus, and grow, Marianne will bring the best guest and sometimes a special surprise. Don't miss this. You never know just which moment will change your life forever. Make sure to tune in and visit momentswithmarianne.com for more information.